Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer. Welcome back into the kitchen for another episode of Cooking Anachronism. Today's episode was actually sent in by a subscriber. So thank you very much, Alton. And this is a Viking recipe for bacon and apples. A very simple recipe, yet a very delicious recipe. And it can be used for pretty much any time of day, any meal. And it can be used with a lot of different things or made all on its own. So for this recipe, I am using approximately half a pound of bacon, in this case, around five or six pieces, and one apple and one onion. Some pepper to taste and a whole clove. I'm only using one clove because I'm only using one apple and one onion, but if you were to up the number of the rest of the ingredients, you could use a couple of cloves or even a few cloves or several cloves. Now this can be scaled up or down depending on however much you would like to make, how many people you were feeding, or whether or not you're going to have it as a side dish or try to have it as a main dish or a very small portion for a garnish potentially. So we're going to cut that bacon into smaller pieces. Remember they are going to shrink as we are pan frying them. Uh, we don't want them to be so big that you can't eat them with a fork, but I didn't want them to be tiny little pieces of bacon either. You can always cut them smaller once they're cooked. You can't really cut them big. We're also going to slice the onions up and we're going to slice the apples. Now the recipe in sort of old timey fashion isn't super specific with what that actually means. It just says to slice the apples and slice the onions. So I'm using my best judgment. We have smaller pieces of onion sliced, not diced, and then these slivers of apple. And the goal there is that we want that to cook fully all the way through without taking too long. So the first step is simply to fry up all of that bacon, get it nice and crispy. We're doing a couple batches here because we don't want it to stick together as it's cooking and we want to make sure it gets nice and crispy. and then remove that from the pan so that you can pat it down dry. We're gonna leave that bacon grease in the pan to cook the onions and the apples in. If there is too much grease, you can pour some of that off. And if there isn't enough, you can add in some butter or some lard. So we're gonna put in those onions, put in that apple, and we're also gonna add pepper to taste as well as a clove. We're gonna let those cook on a very low heat, constantly stirring them to keep them from burning or cooking too quickly. And we're gonna just let them brown up a little bit. The apples will turn slightly translucent as well as the onions. And then the last step is to add the bacon back in. So keep that in mind when you are cooking all these together. You don't wanna cook the onions until they're on the urge of burning and then put the bacon in because then the onions are definitely going to burn. So leave it on the safe side when you are timing everything out. You can always cook it a little bit more. Adding the bacon back in is just to help warm everything through. And when it's ready to serve, you can put it right onto the plate, right onto the bowl, or as the recipe suggests, serve it on a slice of warm bread. Apples and onions go together surprisingly well. It's really, really tasty. I would need a lot of it, I think, to really, really like be its own meal. I am going to try it now um, on a piece of bread, which is how the recipe recommends that it be served. I don't know if this is what the recipe meant specifically, but th this seems to make sense to me. Hmm. We are chewing, we are licking the fingers, we are happy. This, like a number of the other recipes we have done, is super simple. And I'm doing it that way for a reason because it's easily accessible for a lot of people to try. And the simpler the recipe, the easier it will be for an adventurer to actually cook this out in the wild, which I would like to do eventually, but right now the weather does not permit it. This is a very interesting dish because it, it doesn't speak to me one way or another what time of day it's supposed to be eaten. I would absolutely have this for breakfast and be very happy, maybe with scrambled eggs or something like that. But I, can all, I would also gladly have this for lunch or dinner. I really think it fits anywhere. And because it's so simple, it, I think it could fit with a lot of other dishes, depending on whether or not you're having it for breakfast or dinner. I think it could fit in a lot of different places. And it's great just on its own, like as a snack. I'm, I'm really enjoying it with the bread because bacon and bread and onions. These are like my favorite foods. 
I, I'm trying to think about things that I could maybe add to this, and I think it has a good balance already. I think if I were to add any other ingredients like potatoes or mushrooms or something like that, they would start to sort of take over the balance of the dish. Right now it's got just enough of the earthiness with the onion, enough saltiness with the bacon, and that nice touch of sweetness with the apple. I think if I were to add anything else, it would start to either become too bland or too busy. This is a really fantastic recipe, a really easy recipe really fast recipe to make. So I really encourage you to try this one out. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Cooking Anachronism. I will see you soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.